I'm so excited for our new motherhood series. This is the first of six, and this one is, Will I Ever Sleep Again? We are Luke and Heather Bell, and we have eight children. And this is just the Bell's 10. The answer is no, no. I have children that are in their 20s, and I still don't get any sleep. Why? Well, because I worry a lot, making sure I get things done. So no, when you become a mom, sleeping is underrated, underrated. This first episode is going to be like pre-mom, where you're almost going to have the baby, and we're going to cut it off at two, because I really do feel like when kids hit two years old, it's a whole new ball game. So just be prepared. Your sweet little babies, maybe they cry, maybe they're good babies, maybe they're busy babies, but when they hit two, it's almost like a switch hits, chick, and it's like, whose kid is this? Oh, is it ever gonna change? Is he always gonna be like this? Is she always gonna be like this? They do change a little bit. They'll have this, some similar characteristics, but they do change because as you grow and learn, you do change. So this series is gonna be from not being born yet to let's say one year and 364 days. Let's do that. Because really when you get into the toddlers and I think a toddler is officially a two-year-old, they change. It's so different. It's almost like they become a different kid or they just, their character starts to come out. Just disregard if you hear tools because my husband is turning our garage into a game room. So it's been kind of crazy here. Let's get into it. I'm ready. Let's get going. You're not had your baby yet. And people tell you to start preparing. Start preparing. Start getting ready. Get things going at the house. You know, make sure you're just like mentally, physically, emotionally ready. You know, now that I'm 50, almost 52, um, I really don't think you can be ready. You, you can't really prepare yourself to be a mother because one, you don't know what child you're gonna have. You might have an active child. You might have a quiet child. You might have one that sleeps. You might have one that doesn't sleep. You just don't know. So there really isn't anything you can do to be prepared to be a mom. Well, be prepared to not have any sleep. That's definitely one of them. But you really can't really prepare. Hopefully you can get past all of the work. Now I wanna talk about naps. I know when I had my newborn, Gideon, um, when Gideon was born, um, David was four, Joshi was three, and Gideon was newborn. And I had a lot of moms tell me, when your child's sleeping, get things done. I'm here to tell you, when your child is sleeping, sleep. You just had a baby. Your, your, your whole life has been changed. You have another human being that you're responsible for. It's not the same. When they sleep, sleep. This is the advice I'm gonna tell you looking back now. Don't run yourself ragged while your child is resting. You rest, why? Because you need to bond with your child. You need to heal. You need to have relaxing time so you can keep going because now when you cook dinner, you're cooking dinner and making sure your kid's okay, right? Your baby's okay. Maybe you have your baby on you. Maybe everything you do now, they're attached to you. So when they sleep, rest. Maybe it's just watching a good show. Maybe you're gonna grab a cup of coffee and just watch a show while they're sleeping. Maybe you didn't get no sleep the night before and you need to rest. So I would rest when your child rests. So you can be healing and, and bonding and being able to get through the rest of the day. Because if it's like my child, Gideon, he was a really tough infant. He, it took him forever to learn to nurse. I thought my kid was gonna starve because he just, he didn't understand how to latch on because he was two weeks early. And um, at six, boom, cried. And he cried from six to midnight. I'd walk him, my husband would walk him. Then we'd have, because he had colic, we had to do a little vibrating on the bed. There's a trick for you. So if your child has colic, sorry about that. So chaos has happened. My kids are home from school. Nail gun, dogs barking. This is life. But what I was trying to tell you is that my son had colic. I got this vibrating bed, um, little like seat. We would set him on his belly on the bed with no blankets. And then we would put that vibrating seat on the bed and it would shake the whole bed and help him sleep. 
there's a little tip for you. If you have a baby that's colicky, that's what we did. They say to put them on their belly because it helps so their bellies aren't so yucky. Um, and as far as cleaning the house, your kids are sleeping, you feel like you need to get caught up on your house cleaning, I'm sorry, but you're never gonna get caught up on your house cleaning. It's gonna be a fight. And honestly, between the two to seven, eight, disaster. You'll never keep up with the Legos. You'll never keep up with the toys, the trucks. Every, I mean, it's just, it's, it's an endless battle. So don't worry about it. Worry about getting rest. Worry, you have lots of years to worry about a perfectly clean house. Or is your dishes done? It's okay. It's okay. Rest with your baby. I think this is probably the best advice I can give you. Also, I wish I would have done this more. Write everything down. Write everything down. Because when you hit 51, you're not going to remember. You're not, the only things I remember is the things I wrote down. I was really good at it with my first one. I wrote everything down. His first word, his first food, who, you know, what he did first, everything. And as my, I got more children coming to my house, I got really lazy with it. Write everything down. Get a journal, get a baby book, write their first word. Write how you felt when you came home from the hospital. Write what kind of baby they were. Because I pulled them out and my kids grabbed them to look at them and they were laughing and reading it. The biggest smiles ever. They want to see how they were. They want to see how they were. And also, I actually got this from Oprah. I'm going to share it with you now because if you have a new baby, you can start right now. Maybe your baby's older. Maybe they're seven or eight. I watched this on Oprah Winfrey. A lady was on there and she said that every birthday, she wrote a letter to her children. It was, they'd write, she'd write down the age of the child. Like let's say they turned one. She would write down what they did that year, what they were into, what sports, what their best friends were, what was going on in the world. And they just wrote like maybe two or three pages to them, like, dear Izzy, this is what happened your first year. You know, and, and then when they turn 18, you give them all 18 letters and they get to read how they were as a baby, how you felt, things that were happening in the world. And I thought, genius, and I did it for my children. I wish I'd have kept doing it, but I didn't. I think I did it for like maybe eight years and I still have some of them. But the kids, your kids will want to read about themselves. They'll want to see your thoughts or read your thoughts. They will, trust me. My kids love to hear funny stories when they were little. They love to hear what kind of babies they are. So start now. Start journaling. Start just a little bit of note. Maybe just, hey, I was tired today and you pooped all over the place. They love it. They will love it. I'm telling you, write things down. Start those letters. Write them a letter each year on their birthday. One day a year. One day a year. If they played sports, who their best friend was. Where were you living? What fun things did you do over the summer? What made their be their 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 birthday so important. Um, maybe you could tell them how you're feeling with their birthday day. They will love it. So please, if anything I tell you, and the shaky thing on the bed, start doing that. Your kids will love it. These videos aren't gonna be super long, but you know, I don't wanna just ramble. I wanna actually give you substance and I wanna share things with you. So the last thing I wanna share with you is instead of trying to conquer the world with little babies, set goals. I still do this to this day. Set a goal. Get up and say, today my goal is to sweep my floors and clean my bathroom. And that's all you do. You only sweep your floors and clean your bathroom. Yes, of course, dishes. You know, dishes are something that has to be done every day. Um, and if you clean as you use, it's a lot easier. But just set yourself some goals. Maybe set your goal as Monday and Thursday laundry. That's all you do Monday and Thursday. So if you set yourself goals, you won't be so overwhelmed with trying to take care of an infant, get rest, get good sleep. You know, you, you, you will just do what's on your goals. That's it. And I, and I didn't do that. I wanted a perfect house. I wanted everything clean. And it was a constant struggle, which, you know what? It made me irritated. It made me get upset. It made me break down. It made me get frustrated at my husband because I was trying to be the best mom to these little guys, take care of an infant, try and get adequate sleep, try and keep the house clean. And it, you can't do it. It's a lot. It's a lot. So set goals. Start a menu thing. Say, okay, you know what? 
Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm gonna make this Tuesday, Thursdays, leftovers. You know, and you can do that with dinner. You can just set certain goals. Maybe you get a planner where you can do just small things to keep track. But you know, I never did planners. I've tried, I tried. I just, it's enough to get my menu board every week. You know, I am a planner, I'm an organizer, but I've learned to do that through time. I've learned to do that as I've grown and matured as a parent and have gone through mistakes and had to get them right, you know, and you know, apologizing to your children, it's really, really humbling. But let me tell you, you're gonna be doing that a lot. If you wanna keep that really close relationship with your kids, if you make a mistake and do wrong, you apologize. But for this video, we're talking about almost born to one year and 364 days. You're, you're gonna be busy. You're gonna be seeing so many things like your baby walking and talking and crawling and every little thing you're gonna love, you know? And just savor that. This first year is for you to relax, to bond, to be with your child, to figure out what kind of mom you're gonna be, to figure out how you're gonna make your house work you know, because everybody house is the same. And you know, too, pray for your children. Start praying for your children day one. Who better to be the biggest fan for your children than the mom? The mom, I learned this actually, our pastor used to say this. The husband is the head of the home, but the mom is the heart. The mom is the beating of the heart. We're the ones that keeps our house moving and going. We're the ones that determine the atmosphere or determine if we're gonna have a frustrating day or a happy day. We're the ones that heal the boo-boos and do the hugs and the kisses and we're the heart, we're the heart. And if the heart's not working right, the whole body isn't working right. So just love up your kids this first year. Just love them up, take care of yourself, take care of the babies, bond, enjoy their milestones, document everything, sleep when they sleep, just set a couple goals a day. You, 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 trust me, if you're a mom, you're a super mom. You have children, you're a super mom. You're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna do things that you shouldn't be doing. You're gonna maybe get a little too upset than you should. Maybe you're gonna, you know, yell at your husband when he walks in the door because you're so tired from taking care of a baby. You're gonna make mistakes, you're not perfect. And you know, being a mom, it's a big role. We do, we have a big role. It's, it's a lot of responsibility for these little babies and these, our kids and these little humans to trust us, right? To trust that we're gonna take care of them and we're gonna protect them and, and feed them and clothe them and, and invest in them. But I'm telling you, invest in your children because all this other stuff doesn't matter. And it goes so fast. This thing, it doesn't matter. What's going on around you, having a perfect house, um, keeping up with the perfect trends, making sure you reach out to friends and all that stuff, it doesn't matter. Friends do matter, but your first priority is your family. It's your children. You're a new mom. You're trying to find your way. And that's what's mo more important. And the kids, they might not, they probably won't remember it, right? But you're just building your home and you're starting to invest in that child. So the next stage of life for them and for you it'll be easier to transition. Well, going into the terrible twos, there's no easy transition. There's a couple ages that are really tough, two, 13, 16, and when they graduate. Those are tough ages. There's no really easy transition, but get a, get a, get a foundation now. Figure out how you're gonna do things. Figure out what works for you, what works for your kids, what works for your husband. And you know, two is, yeah, your husband might have had a big day or a busy day, but they do wanna know what's going on. So include your husbands. Include the dads, include them in the milestones, be excited and tell them what happened that day. And if you need to relax and you, you're frustrated, you can share those with your husband. He wants to be a part of that. You don't want to nag and complain because they're working hard too, but you can go to him because that's what he's there for, for you to lean on him and for him to say, Hey, what do you need? I can help you out with it. So this is you know, this is what I have for you the first year. I'm sure as I'm talking about these other motherhood um, steps, I'm going to think of other things when the kids were little, you know. But um, the first year, a couple years, it's a blur. It really is. It just goes so fast. And there's just so much going on because you're trying to find your way. And you're trying to figure out how to be a mom and how to be a mom that is making a difference and being a good mom. You know what I'm saying? You just, you're just, 
you're trying to figure it out. And, and once you get your feet on the ground, it does make it easier because you got some tough times coming. You got some tough times coming emotionally, physically, spiritually, <laughs> you got tough times coming. So right now I just feel like the first part of their lives and, and the first part of you being a mother is just really reflecting, being prepared when you're ki not prepared before. Cause I really don't think you can be prepared to be a mom. You just don't know. Um, but just preparing for the other stages of life and getting your feet grounded. So I know you're doing a great job. Keep it up. I'm proud of you. You do what you have to do. And I can't wait to talk about the next series of two toddlers, two, we're going to say two to almost five, because that's like the preschool before they get to school and two year olds. Oh gosh, I got so many stories about two year olds, but um, thank you for joining me in this very first video of our motherhood series. I'm so excited. Um, I'm jotting down lots of notes and I'll work on that second series, but don't beat yourself up. You're doing great. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes and that's okay. It's okay. You're going to do great. All right. I can't wait to talk to you guys in our series number two, the terrible twos. Oh, <laughs> the terrible twos. Ah, <sighs> well, thank you so much for your time. Make sure to subscribe and like Just the Bells 10 and make sure to tune in to our, our next motherhood series. And in about a week, I'll be starting Coffee Time with Mom Bell, where we're going to be doing podcasts on motherhood, parenting, craziness, cooking, funny things that's happened, uh, being a wife, being a mom, everything that comes in store with moms. And I'm telling you, when you get a good cup of coffee, whoo wee, will the conversation go. The conversation will go. All right. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day today.